Hey guys and welcome back to the Kojo's Legacy channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about Nudica and its cachet system. So yeah, let's begin. I'm going to talk about Nudica and what the cachet is, how it benefits Nudica, and lastly, we'll discuss how to manually set it up. All right. Now, just a full disclaimer, this video is not going to tell you anything groundbreaking. Chances are there's a 80-90% chance that the cachet system is already active on your device. So there's no need to panic. I'm just showing you guys how to do it manually for those of you who maybe do not have it installed for some reason, or maybe when Nutica asked you to download it, you said no. So I'm just, I'm just making this video for that purpose. And also to inform you guys a little bit about how it, it all works. Okay, so the cache system is used as a way to improve performance between compiles, like you make an initial compilation, then you make a few changes changes to your code here and there. Like you have a thousand line application and you only change like 10 lines. So it seems kind of unfair, right? That you need to recompile the whole thing. And if the first compile took like an hour, then the second compile is also going to take an hour. That seems a bit wrong, right? Well, that's where the cache system kicks in. It basically uh, uses, um, you know, cached results. It stores the results from the previous compile and it saves them and uses them in the future when you make your second compilation. So it uses those stored results. It detects which parts need to be recompiled and only recompiles those. At least that's what it generally tries to do. Sometimes it's not that efficient, but you know, it's still an improvement. So yeah, that's how the cache system works. Now I'm just going to take you guys over to Nudica's, uh page over here just to read a few things out to you guys basically nudica has i mean not nudica it's more like c c has multiple compilers c has the ming gw compiler then there's the msvc the microsoft compilers then there's the clang cl compilers so those are like three different types okay now for msvc and clang cl cl cache is used that's the name of the cache okay and this is, as you can see here, automatic and already included in Nutica. So if you're using MSVC or Clang CL, then there's no need to worry. And uh, you already have the cache system installed and it's working for you. Okay. Now in Windows and the Ming GW setup, you will find that the cache is not item automatically included. So you need to actually install it. Or actually, Nutica will actually prompt you to install it. It will detect that you have no cache installed and will actually say, hey, you don't have it installed, should be downloaded for you. It'll give you a yes and no prompt. Okay, uh, I already have it installed. Sorry, not installed. I just have it downloaded and added to my environment variables. Let me show you here. Okay, just gonna go over here to environment variables. And gonna go to my path, and you can see it right here. You see this here? This is where I've downloaded the file, the folder, and just extracted it. That's it. You just need to include the file path to the folder. Okay, just like this. And by the way, don't do something dumb like cccache.exe. Some people do that. Don't do that. Okay, just just the folder path. And where do we download this folder from? Well, we download it from their website, CC Cache. I'll include a link to this in the description below. You just need to, uh, you know, download whichever one you want to. And, you know, I downloaded this one. Download it, extract it, copy paste the path to your environment variables, and then we compile. Okay, this is the command I'm going to use. I'm using MingGW, this flag here specifically, because by default, Nutica is using Clang CL. I actually have both installed on my device. So uh, if I don't specify Ming GW, it's actually going to use Clang by default. So if I just run this now. Okay, so I skipped ahead a bit and here we have some results. Let me just show you a few important things. First of all, if you look at this command over here, you can actually see which compiler is being used. This is useful for those of you who are confused as to whether your, uh, whether Nutica is using CL cache or CC cache. If it says GCC uh, or Ming GW, then you know that 
CC cache is being used. If it is Clang CL or MSVC, then you know CL cache is being used. Okay, we can see these uh, commands over here for CC cache. Okay, and I'll, I'm already getting some cache hits, and that's because I already compiled this program. Maybe I should have deleted those somehow. Uh, but yeah, I already compiled this program before making this video. That's why I got these cache hits over here. Okay. And yeah, so this run of mine was actually uh, optimized by the cache. On second thought, I think I'll show you guys one more thing where we, uh, I'm just going to remove the MingGW flag because I only really added this in the first place so that I could uh, show you guys, you know, um, how to use CC cache. Because if I had not included this, then it, Nutica would have switched to CL, Clang CL, and would have used CL cache instead of CC cache. So if I remove this, we can actually observe CL cache being used. Okay, and uh, this should compile pretty quickly. Otherwise, I'll skip ahead. And looks like it's going to compile quickly. Okay, cool. It's doing the C compilation now. And as you can see here, it's using the Clang CL. So uh, it's going to be using CL cache. There we go. Eight cache hits, two cache misses. And great. Cool. So that's what we just saw. Good. And that's the separate thing going on for one file. And we can just ignore that. Just to reiterate a few things. If you have MSVC or Clang CL, no need to do anything. This video is just for information purposes. Then in your case, Clang CL and MSVC have CL cache used automatically by Nitika. Those of you who are on Windows and you are using MingGW, I just told you guys how to use CC cache and manually do it. And how to ident ident identify it actually as well. I told you guys how to do that. Whether you're using Clang CL or whether you're using MingGW or, you know. And no need to really worry even if you are using MingGW and Windows because uh, Nutica will actually ask you right in the start when you make your first compilation ever, it's going to ask you whether you want to have it downloaded or not. And it'll automatically download it for you and include it where it should be. So there's no need, no real need to worry. I'm not sure who this, who this video is going to help really, but I just thought it's something I should share because something I know and something I didn't mention in my other video. So yeah, hope you guys found the video useful. See you guys in the next one.